Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my world of modeling and my workbench. Dan here as always, and in this video we're going to be talking about hand painting graffiti on model trains like this one here. In this particular video we're going to be focusing on a box car, and we're going to be doing several different graffiti styles with several different techniques that I use regularly for my artwork. Now talking about the modern prototypes here. When you're modeling modern day, so anything between mid-2000s uh, to the present, uh, we're talking about rail cars, modern rail cars, and most of them will usually have graffiti like this. Uh, these are very basic art styles. Some of it can get kind of complex, but I'm going to be focusing more over on generally the more common style of artwork for this video. So don't worry, we're not going to be getting into anything too complex. That'll come later. What we're going to be working on is basic graffiti styles like this, as you can see, that I've translated on this modern auto rack here. Now, again, I know some people really hate graffiti, but again, if you're modeling modern era, anything from early, mid, late 2000s, you got to have rail cars with graffiti. I'm telling you. It doesn't look right having a whole string of weathered box cars on a modern train and not having any of them with graffiti. Same thing with auto racks. It just does not look prototypical. So we're going to be discussing some tips, tricks, and ways to make your models look better than everyone else. Let's get started guys. Alright, so we're set up on my workbench here and we're going to be actually looking at this GMRC boxcar. This is an Atherin 50 foot boxcar out of their newer release. Uh, it's a pretty well detailed model, but of course it doesn't really matter the quality of the model. What we're trying to focus on today is painting graffiti like this, as you can see on this car. And obviously with graffiti, I mean there's so many different kinds of graffiti. You can paint this on all kinds of rolling stock, all kinds of different boxcars. Here's an example I just did the other day uh, with some finished graffiti there. Of course, you can do it on tank cars, you can do it on gondolas, uh, auto racks are another common car. Here's some custom painted artwork I've done on this auto rack here. Uh, even locomotives, you know, even locomotives, especially out west, can get some graffiti. So, you know, just use these techniques for whatever model you're using. It doesn't necessarily have to be a box car, but I'm going to be using a box car for this reference here. So, obviously, the second biggest question I get when doing graffiti is where do I get my prototype reference? And the simple answer to that is anywhere I can find it. As you can see, the graffiti I'm actually going to be copying for this car is on this covered hopper here. Uh, simple reason because I couldn't find good enough artwork for this particular car, and since I can't have, a, or rather find a photo of this particular model I'm going to be uh, replicating, I decided to hack some graffiti from the internet. And this is something I do quite often, you know, you don't have to necessarily stick to uh, the prototype car to try to find graffiti. If you can't find the photos, use something else. Find something else to get inspired with. As long as you're putting some graffiti on and trying to, you know, copy it to the best of your ability, that's what matters. And as you can see here, I said uh, I stumbled on this graffiti uh, on YouTube here. I'm not going to name the name of the video, but we're looking at this tag here. This is what I'm actually going to be replicating. Now, this particular tag is by Verbs. Now, a way you can also look up prototype artwork if your guys are trying to copy uh, some basic tags, some basic graffiti like this, you can of course look up this particular artist, look at other pieces he's done. You can look up artists like ICH Ichabod, he's the very common one. A lot of people like his artwork, he's the uh, brick letter style uh, dude who does the skull, the pointing uh, finger skull. Very common artwork, you can of course look that up. Uh, you can of course type in graffiti. Simple as that. Do a Google search on graffiti or train graffiti, even better, and that'll show you all kinds of different archive material on graffiti, all kinds of websites, Flickr, for example. Uh, sometimes I get my artwork from roadpicturearchives.net, for example. I'll go on there, search for a particular class of car, like a boxcar, for example, go through tons of different car numbers of a particular road, and see what if I can just, you know, pick out some different tags that I like, and I'll combine them together and make the various artwork. Of course, if you have a picture of the prototype car and you can copy the exact graffiti, that's always the best. And that's generally what I try to do, but like I said, I don't have an exact photo of the car that I'm replicating, so I'm taking liberty here to use a tag that's relatively easy and, again, has all the details I want to be able to demonstrate for the purpose of this video. Uh, it features different colors. It has a pretty nice shading effect. It's got highlight effects. It's got a backdrop, shadowing, everything. That's the very, very basic style of graffiti tag that you'll see. So, again... You know, you can of course also, with prototype reference, you can go out and actually watch the trains. Get pictures of your own cars. If you see a piece of graffiti artwork you want to get, it, take a picture of it. And then that's basically a reference material. You know, there's no right or wrong way of getting reference material. Wherever you can find it, whatever you want to copy, that's what works. Alright, with that long-winded section out of the way here, let's go ahead and talk about the kind of paints I'm going to be using. I, of course, always use craft acrylic. The 
Third big question I always get asked when I use craft acrylic is people will ask me if I thin this out, and the answer is no, I do not. Uh, in some cases, I might have to if my paint's starting to get a little tacky because, honestly, acrylic doesn't have the best shelf life. I, of course, can mix up my own colors, but I have tons and tons of different colors. You can see I just have a small selection of different colors I'm going to be using here in the background for this project uh, out. But I again have tons of different colors. But the other reason I use craft acrylic paint is because it's cheap. You get multiple different colors and it's affordable. You know this stuff is only like 79 cents a bottle unless you get like uh, the bigger bottles like this for example. You know that can set you back maybe one two dollars. But again it's not that big an investment and you get tons of paint. Uh, so that's why I prefer the acrylic paints. But of course you can use uh, enamel paints if you like. However, with enamel paints, uh, they're a little bit chunkier to work with. They take longer to dry. They stay tacky for a very long time. They can be a little bit harder to control. And of course, if you screw something up, they're harder to remove if you choose to remove it. Uh, acrylic paint, for example, you know, this isn't sealed in place. I just painted this tag here. If I didn't like it, I could simply take this model with a toothbrush and soap and water and scrub this tag right off. And it would simply come right off. So that's, again, why I like to use the acrylic paints because, again, they're easy to mix. Uh, easy to use on a brush, great for model work like this, and they're affordable, so that's why I choose the acrylic paints. Now, let's talk about brushes, because brushes are the key to this kind of effect. Obviously, with brushes, you want the finest, as you can see here. And I've talked about these before. My particular brand of choice is these Atlas brushes, because they offer several different fine tip brushes. In this particular case, this is a 5 O brush at number 155 and if we actually look we have the very very fine tip on that that's very sharp and that's ideal for doing the graffiti as you can see I have two one's a little bit more worn out one's ultra fine so I do all of my fine line work all my highlight work and everything like that small fine tags with this brush here this brush is more for filling in but keeping some kind of detail as I'm painting um, you can, of course, use liner brushes like this for larger tags and larger areas to fill them in. Uh, just remember, too, uh, larger brushes, generally, they'll pick up a little bit more paint, and a lot of times you'll end up getting more paint on the model quicker than you need, and you want to be careful about letting the paint chunk up because it will get some texture very quick. Uh, again, I use the paint full strength, which is fine, but you do got to remember that with that caveat, you don't want to blotch it on there because it will get thick and it will get chunky on you real fast, and there's nothing more unrealistic than chunky graffiti. So also keep that in mind. Try to use brushes that are going to keep the paint thin. Uh, but again, you can use liners. These are the kind of brushes you can use. But again, I prefer the Atlas brushes. You don't have to necessarily get this brand but you can use something similar. But just again, make sure that you're using very good quality brushes and not something that's going to wear out. You know, I can get uh, quite a few jobs done with one of these brushes before they start getting frayed out. But again, the quality matters because a cheap brush, it'll get worn out real quick and you won't be able to paint anything with it. And you, of course, want to avoid brushes like this where they start getting so frayed out that they're almost pointless. You can see that tip is completely frayed and this is honestly going to go in my junk box of spare uh, brushes so I'm not going to be using something like that, and I don't recommend you guys use something like that because, again, it's very rough, and it's not going to get you fine lines because in scale form here, you want to keep your graffiti tight. You want to keep lines tight. Everything is very important here. Even if you're painting crappy graffiti that maybe is kind of squiggly and everything like that, when you're trying to replicate those kind of squiggles and stuff, it doesn't translate well to scale. So, I, again, I recommend you try to keep things as straight as possible, and, again, using good brushes will help you achieve that. Now, the hand motion. I've talked about this before. I'm not exactly uh, the best with my hands. You can see I have the shakes pretty good. It's because I'm a drummer. I have a little bit of nerve damage in my hands. Uh, but how I remedy this is I just hold the brush as, as uh, smoothly as I can, and I will usually rest this hand against my workbench so I'm completely controlled. I know some people like to hold the model in hand like this and then paint. I've seen a couple modelers do that, and that's fine. You know, work however you want and however you're comfortable with it. I generally try to have the model set up on my um, workbench, I'll have like a tool I can just kind of prop it up on. This works fine, but again, just be careful with finer, finer detailed cars that you're not breaking off details when you're having it set up like this, because sometimes you can bend stirrups and things. But with these Atherin models, they're pretty durable, so I don't have to worry about that too much. So Okay, so with all that being said, let's go ahead and work on the graffiti here. For the tag I'm replicating here, you can see the main color is a darker blue shade. And to replicate this tag, I'm going to be using the acrylic paint. And I've actually taken my uh, blue, and I've taken a Hawaii blue by Anita's and mixed them together to create the custom color that I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fine Atlas brush, and I'm going to take and grab some of this paint that I've actually mixed up on a sheet of paper, 
and I'm going to try to position this exactly where I want it. So in this case, I kind of want the tag in this corner. I'm going to put it here and then work everything else around it. Um, so I'm going to start in the corner here. If we get zoomed in, I'm basically going to take the brush. I'm going to pick a spot where I want it. And I'm just going to start very carefully painting this on. Um, you know, there's multiple different ways you can do this kind of technique, but this is the basic fill-in. The basic outline is usually what you want to start with first. Uh, I know some artists like to take and they'll sketch out the design on the side of the car before they actually paint it. I don't really do that so much anymore, but I actually used to. But if you guys want, you can always take like a mechanical pencil or something like that, and you can actually trace the outline of the graffiti you're painting so you get a rough idea of what it's going to look like and where you need to keep it so that it's scale sized and again use that as a guide to paint on your letters and everything and then all the other details can come later um, but in this case I just pretty much freehand this is my basic freehand technique and I just simply go in and I just start shading everything in I get the basic outline of the graffiti tag filled in first we're not worried about details here we're just doing the basic fill in as you can see so I'm going to just try to copy the basic shape of this uh, particular V lettering onto this car and I'm going to work it around all the ribs and everything else until I'm happy with the shape and I got it exactly how I want it if all goes well with that you should be able to have a reasonable looking tag in place you can see this one is all finished up it's still in the process of drying a little bit but I can keep working on it uh, it matches pretty well with um, you know the image online and I scaled it down pretty well to fit this particular car um, notice I have not put on any uh, little details or any highlights or anything what we need to work on right now is the colors in this case with this graffiti it has a little bit of a band of different color in the center um, and I'm going to be painting that on next and it's going to be yellow so I got some Anita's bright yellow to do this and again, I'm going to do the yellow first. There's also some orange, but we're just going to be using this. So what I'm going to do is just come back in here, and I'm just going to paint over what we've already done. And I'm going to, again, keep it in those borders. And, of course, we'll tie all this together uh, in a little while with some different colors, and then we'll add our highlights. And this will all look much more to the prototype. Of course, this always looks kind of crappy at first, but this is just part of it. Just get your outlines done first, and then you can go back, and then you can fill all this in. There is the second color applied, and I had to do two light coats of this to get the yellow built up just enough to where I needed it to be. And you can see it's all filled in. So now I'm going to add the orange highlights with a little bit of straight Anita's orange uh, right at the top and bottom of this yellow highlight. Uh, it's not going to be worked on too much. I'm again just going to take a fine tip brush and I'm just going to slowly build this color on. So I'll start at the top like this and just like before I'll just slowly work this color on kind of roughly because uh, the way they painted it on there it's to look like kind of an overspray effect. So I'm going to do this kind of lightly and I'll just sort of build up the layers of paint really really lightly on this. As you can see, we now have our color borders put in place. Uh, everything matches up pretty well. Again, when you're trying to copy some of this, again, you know, if you're especially freelancing the graffiti onto a different car, uh, you don't have to be necessarily exactly precise, but as long as you use the reference photos as a guideline, you can get some decent results like this here, and I'm very happy uh, with how this turned out. What we need to do now is start putting in the borders, and then we'll move on to the details and things like that. Uh, the border is basically either going to be a white line, a black line, a yellow line, you know, a, a purple line. Really, again, it refer, uh, just comes down to what is on the prototype. But the most common lines as a border you'll see are white lines and black lines, or a mixture of the two. In this case, it has the black borders and then white highlights. So what we're going to be doing, again, is taking straight black acrylic, and I'm using the absolute finest uh, 10-0, number 155 brush here. Uh, by Atlas to do this. So I just take a little bit of paint at the time to do this. Take note too, I'm not saturating this brush and paint. I want that paint to be just on the tip so that I have complete precise control. If you soak the brush and the paint, you're not going to have as much control. Also when you're doing this, try to keep as much of a steady hand as possible. Use whatever technique you need to to maintain that steady grip and control. 
Uh, of course, if you do slip up, you can always go back. You can always touch this paint up if you need to. You can make a new bit of that base coat and then just touch up what you uh, might mess up. But I've done this enough times that I have a pretty good hand at this. I usually just go in and do it one-handed. And I can generally have a, a basic tag like this filled in in about 10 minutes. All right, so it came out pretty good. You can see I got all of the thicker border lines painted on. I did the finer detail work after I got the main border on. Uh, it looks pretty good. There's a few areas i got to touch up where things are misproportioned a little bit, um, but I'll just mix up a little bit more of this blue color and I'll touch some stuff up. What I want to work on right now is the purple border that will go around all of this, and then I'll come in, fix up, and touch up some of the paint, and then I'll add our highlights. What we need to do is take some purple. In this case, I'm using some straight purple Anita's acrylic. Again, full strength, and I'm going to be using, actually, probably better get a different brush for this. I'm going to be using uh, another fine tip here for this process. And again, I'm just going to refer to prototype photos. You know, a lot of taggers use uh, color backgrounds for their tags, which makes them pop a little bit more on the car. Um, this will help, of course, to detail this a little bit more. Um, but even if you're freelancing graffiti, always think about maybe adding some borders or something like that to your graffiti to add color. You know, graffiti is pretty colorful a lot of times, especially by better artists. They'll generally put a lot of color into their work. And having a color border can really even make a basic tag like this one pop quite a bit, as you'll see. So I'm just going to proceed to work around all this lettering and put in all this purple paint. Again, working it in on all these small little details around the store track areas underneath the lettering, for example, around the top, uh, around this data here, for example. Alright, so at this point we've got some pretty good headway going here. Overall the graffiti's turned out really good. I really like the way it looks. It blends well with the other graffiti and it's starting to look just like a real box car. And I've, of course, at this point added some minor weathering effects to make it look like some fresh patching here and there, some paint chipping and uh, some weathering to the patches, but we're still focusing on the graffiti here. Now, again, with most graffiti like this, a lot of times this kind of graffiti will be accompanied by tags of people not just so much writing their John Hancock on the side, moreover writing some uh, gibberish or some small slurs or sayings or things like that on the sides. It's a very common thing you see. A lot of times they write them all over the place. Sometimes this lettering can be a little hard to copy, but if you use photos and you can practice a little bit, you can generally get this kind of art style down. As you can see, there's a little bit of black tagging I've done, some white tagging here. Uh, and some of this is hand-painted, some of this is hand-drawn. Now, what I like to do is I like to bounce back between techniques to do a lot of my uh, hand-drawn graffiti, where I'll, I'll take like a paint pen or something. The main thing I use is for white, for example, is a Jelly Roll 08 pen here. These have a very fine tip. You can do a lot of fine detail effects with these. And I've demonstrated doing graffiti with these a couple times on this channel using uh, several different models as examples. Of course, you can use the uh, Micron pens. They make these in a very fine tip and then an ultra fine tip. So you can do some pretty fine stuff. I also like to bounce for, you know, back and forth between different things. I got like, you know, Sharpies stuff like that. I have pens. I will actually sometimes use pens to do small little hobo tags or small little stencil tags and things like that uh, in between these little grab irons for example. That's a big area you'll see that. So again you know there's a lot of different ways you can model these tags and I'm actually going to demonstrate a few examples on this side here and then I'll do some others on the opposite side. Right here in this corner I want some uh, basic handwriting here so I'm going to take and I'm just going to write something just random just to have there just add some extra detail some extra cool effects you can of course do some overspray effects you can do all kinds of little things you can add some little dots if you want you can go pretty crazy with this stuff you know these guys do all kinds of crazy little effects and all kinds of cool stuff of their artwork so you know the sky's the limit with what kind of art styles you can choose but this tag here this one up here for example some of the small tagging in this little area these are just some examples up here in this top corner I can do a relatively larger graffiti tag and if I can keep uh, this in shot here I will just take and I'm just going to press this pretty firmly down on the sides and if you go slow enough you can usually get a pretty good discharge of ink uh, in the area you're trying to work with and then I will kind of just vary the uh, texture and consistency up for certain things you know if it's not uh, too crazy 
I'll just kind of go in. I'll, again, like I said, just vary the textures and the layers of paint on this because a lot of times these guys don't just try to make this all look, you know, perfect. They try to like uh, blend it up. They'll do some letters with some overspray. They'll add little dots. They'll add little lines, little slash marks, for example. There's a hundred different ways that you can do tags like this. But again, I recommend when you're just getting started, you know, just go online. Look at some prototype photos of boxcars in general service. Get an idea of what some of these tags might look like. And, you know, just practice trying to copy them on a scrap model, on a piece of paper, for example. You can do anything you want. You can just take a piece of paper and then just sit there and write little graffiti scribble tags all day. And, of course, you can also make these up. You know, there's no right and wrong way to do this. Uh, to finish this little tag up, I'm going to go ahead and add a little halo. Just like this. And that'll call it a day. Alright, as we look at the opposite side of this car for some more uh, examples of graffiti tags and such, you can see I've painted this more complex tag here in the corner, and I've done the smaller, older graffiti tag here, and then I got a larger, kind of crappier style graffiti tag that I'll be uh, weathering up along with the car to blend in. I want to keep this one a little bit fresher, so I'll avoid trying to weather it up too much. Uh, but again, you can see some differences in art styles here. Kind of a crappy, uh, crappy style, and then a new style. You know, these are things that you can kind of mix together, and it's very prototypical. The new and old getting mixed together in a basically melting pot. Uh, a rolling canvas like this. So, another example of the tags I want to demonstrate, though, that you can do to replicate, say, chalk tags and older graffiti tags, worn out tags, for example, is to use these colored pencils. In this case, I got a white Prismacolor pencil. These are really great. You can get them at any good hobby store. Just make sure you have a nice sharp tip on this, and then you can just basically go in. And if I do a quick example here, I'll lay in some lettering. I will just put in a T. And I'll just kind of quickly fill it in like this. I'll put an H here. A partial H, really. I want to make it look like this is kind of buried behind this other graffiti. I'll put a little something there. Maybe something right there. And then the top of what I'll say is an E. And then a top of an exclamation point. So as you can see, you have another kind of crappier style of graffiti and you can of course go in, you can add some halos, you can do all kinds of little stuff, you can add some more little scribble tags around that for example, but there's a variety of different ways you can do this graffiti. You can see you have uh, four different styles of graffiti right there alone that you can replicate and there's plenty more techniques. Like I said, you can use ballpoint pens, you can use mechanical pencils, you can use all kinds of stuff to do these fine little tags. You know, I'll just go in here with the ballpoint pen, I'll just take it and I'll just model something real quick, you know, uh, a lot of these artists will kind of just draw what they want, really. It doesn't have to be, you know, anything detailed. A lot of this is going to scale down quite a bit, uh, but you can again use prototype photos to get a rough idea of what some of this stuff will look like. And of course, when you're doing these smaller little like hobo tags and things like that, keep the lettering very small and again that's why a mechanical pencil is really great for this or a ballpoint pen because you can do some really fine detail effects like this alright looking ahead a little bit here you can see the car is pretty much tied together now we have the prototype weathering on and I've blended in the graffiti work here with some light washes, a little bit of rust effects, some powder work, and things like that. And that brings us to the last subject of modeling graffiti. Don't be afraid to weather your graffiti a little bit. Remember, these are on these rail cars, which normally will get very, very dirty. Uh, it's a known fact, you know, if you paint bright graffiti over a rusty car body, uh, the odds are in a few years all of that rust on that car body will start bleeding over that graffiti tag and it'll start rusting over it. It's just going to age basically with the car itself. Uh, so this is a normal thing you'll see on this graffiti. Uh, so again, don't be afraid to weather it. In this case, on this prototype, I've done the patchwork there on that car in that corner. And you can also see that I've done the safety striping over it. I've added some rust effects, heavy chipping effects around the door track because that's a very common area you'll see a lot of heavy weathering. Uh, you can see on this tag here, it's got some streaking coming down from it, lots of grime and stuff like that. Basically, just just blend it into the car body a little bit more and make it look a little bit older and a little bit more naturally placed. Not so bright and not so vibrant, as you can see. On this opposite side here, the one that we were working on, you can see I've, done, again, just done some very light washes down the sides of the car just to blend our artwork in a little bit 
just make it look a little bit more natural and you can see it looks a lot more convincing and it's a lot more realistic so that's my final little bit of advice when modeling graffiti don't be afraid to weather it a little bit even if it's just a minor grime wash it can really improve the look of your graffiti and it can make it look a lot more realistic and a lot more convincing alright guys so that's gonna wrap up this video thank you for watching uh, I know this one took a long time to get out and I apologize I've been meaning to do a graffiti demo video for quite some time uh, but I just haven't gotten around to it I haven't had a subject really uh, uh, a good example to model different kinds of graffiti like this boxcar here so this one worked out very great for this video it was a uh, basically a guinea pig um, so again thank you for watching guys be sure to subscribe here on YouTube for more content in the future follow my work on Facebook and Instagram my Facebook page is Dan's Custom Trains and my Instagram is Danny Dankinson which is all lowercase be sure to follow me there to see what kind of projects I'm working on because I'm always posting pictures and video clips of things that I'm working on. So thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.